real life action. Today, we're heading to Rockland, Maine to visit the Owl's Head Transportation Museum. If it has wheels and a motor, you'll find a classic version of it here. Well, our motorcycle collection is evolving. Uh, we are about to place more emphasis on the motorcycle collection. But what we have now, we have from the uh, very, we have very early examples, such as an early Harley, and we have uh, examples as new as, uh, I think, the 1930s, uh, more modern Harleys. But they haven't changed much. Last year, we had a, the loan of an MV Augusta, which is a wonderful motorcycle, very rare, high-performance motorcycle from the 1970s. And we compared the technologies of the belt-driven Harley to the uh, to MV Augusta. The point is our collection is a representative collection, not necessarily uh, in terms of numbers, but quality. The Indian Four, like the, like the Henderson Fours, typically circa 1928 to 32. This bike is a 1931. Uh, an interesting concept to have four cannons going off under the seat of a motorcycle. Think about that. Uh, it was during a period of time where people were putting these four-cylinder air-cooled engines even in aircraft. So that very engine in this, in this, in this motorcycle uh, was actually used in aircraft. Having a four-cylinder engine was a major thing in 1931. This was a very, power, very, very powerful motorcycle. Now, we not only kept it running, but we have completely restored this motorcycle. There's still a few little details that we're, we're hunting for. And it's an excellent example of a four-cannon-powered uh, two-wheeler. So our Harley, uh, this Harley, the white one, is a great example of a powerful bike for that period of time uh, and a great step in the evolutionary ladder of motorcycles. The Biotigo was built by a young man named Scripps Booth, and he wanted to build the largest motorcycle and most powerful motorcycle in the world. With what we believe to be the first American-produced V8 engine, now, he knew that something so heavy would require some type of safety system. And he called, I think, landing gear. He referred to a set of wheels on each side that he could lower uh, with a lever. He built the front frame uh, uh, fork out of bronze. And it was definitely not a success. But Scripps Booth, as many inventors, including the Wright brothers, including Henry Ford, including Glenn Curtis, learned from failure. Okay, failure often pollinates success. So we in this museum not only have his motorcycle, but we also lead into the evolution of his successful cycle cars. And we have two other examples here that show the evolution from the Biotigo to what we call a cycle car with four wheels, but very narrow, uh, to a success, uh, successful example of around a 1920 vintage Scripps booth. And then dad ran out of money. That is one heck of a sweet collection. Thanks, Charles. For more information on the Owl's Head Transportation Museum, go to our website at steeldreamstv.com.